Just weeks ago, we held our Dominion Conference with the theme, Hope for the Nation. Today, we're going to show some encouraging video clips from four of our speakers as they bring the word of the Lord. The world may appear troublesome, but in the midst of it all, God is speaking restoration and hope. Do you need fresh hope? Then stay tuned. This is Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. I'm glad you've tuned into the broadcast because I know it's going to be an encouraging one for you. Uh, Joan, we get the privilege of going back into Dominion Conference, which is actually just weeks ago. Uh -huh. And it included our building dedication and grand opening, which was very exciting for us. And uh, there were some very powerful things that took place. Well, you know, interesting thing on our uh, on the Sunday evening, we dedicated our new building and media center. It's a church, it's a conference center, a media center. And uh, we had speakers come from all over mm -hmm. Canada, uh, from uh, Ottawa and then a couple from Alberta that actually brought words of the Lord to this um, meeting uh, when we dedicated the building. And it was interesting how every word, it seemed like was it had a thread. Yeah, it, they were saying so. the same things. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, well, first of all, let me just say that the words that we received from uh, the speakers that you're going to see on the program were very encouraging to us. Mm -hmm. They really reaffirmed something we already believed. The building is a really important step towards us fulfilling what we sense is our purpose and destiny, and, uh, and it'll come out in these words that we hear. But listen, uh, we said in the opener as well, you know, that the world looks very chaotic right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I hear people, I see it posting on their social media, you know, what in the world is going on? How do we understand any of this? Yeah. But Joan, in the darkness, we f read it in Isaiah 60, there's mm -hmm. light. There is and, light. And uh, there's hope. And God speaks hope and restoration in the midst of some of the most chaotic situations. So yeah. this is going to be hopeful and encouraging for you. Because even in your situation, there's hope. And by the way, the prayer center is open for you. Uh, you can call and receive prayer and ministry and encouragement. Great team working with Jill Mattis. And we're hearing such good reports from that as well. Well, let's go into this clip right now. You have established in a certain respect as a pastor three wells that represented three distinct phases. God takes you from glory to glory. Your first well, a great church grew out of it. And you were pastor-teacher the birthing of television came out of it. The second well, the Miracle Channel, Dominion Gateway, became the prophetic well. And that amplified. And now, as God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, this is your third well. And this is the apostolic well. Each one was called to the nation. And over this building, this represents a well that waters will flow out of. And I was drawn to Ezekiel 47. That as the waters went out from that well, that everywhere they went, there was great healing. The waters will represent the ministries that will flow out. In each of the wells, that you led in the city as a gateway to heaven, there was a different type of ministry. This ministry will be particularly characterized apostolically, which will carry the pastoral and the prophetic, of the ministries of sons and daughters. This is your crowning season of your life in which the spirit of sons and daughters will now carry the heart for the nation that you carry. And, and when Len said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it, it just downloaded very, very clearly to me. And I hear the Lord say, son and daughter, the multiplication didn't come with Abraham and it didn't come with Isaac. The multiplication came with Jacob. The multiplication came with the one who seemed the least likely, who seemed the least spiritual. 
but I gave him the sons and daughters. And you've said in your heart in the past, have we forfeited the right of our sons and our daughters? For some who had walked with you had turned away, and some had gone a different way. And there was a sense of Father has the anointing that we have to father and to expand, to amplify in order to see the kingdom increase, in order to see these young ones rise up. Has it, has it been taken apart? Has it been taken away? And the Lord said, no, it was only delayed. For now the, son, now the time will come when the sons and daughters will come to you. Some will come back to you. Some will come and say, we didn't understand it. We weren't mature enough. But we see that restoration has an anointing. We see that restoration can happen and be a grace. And we see that multiplication can happen for those who will not quit. So I declare over you that as the sons spoke over you last, before anybody else, at the end of anybody else, that the sons rising up, it's a type and it's a symbol of the sons that will rise up and they will come and they will lay their hands on your feet and say, show us what you know. Show us how you do this. Teach us the faith that you have. For the faith that you have inspires my heart and I need someone to show me for I'm called to the nation. I'm called to the business mountain. I feel like I'm supposed to go into education. I feel like I'm supposed to be involved in media and I don't know where else to go. And I tell you the apostolic calling will drive Draw them to this place. Some won't even know why. They'll move to Lethbridge and they'll get a job at 7-Eleven and they'll say, God, what is it? What am I supposed to do? And as they come here, the Lord will say, go to that place. They'll drive by the building and as they drive by the building, the same voice that said, I could use that place will say in their hearts, go to that place. And they'll come in and they'll say, what, what is it with this place? I know it's a church. We've heard things about you. You're one of those way out there churches and you worship and you praise and you do all, but the Lord Lord says, when my presence comes and it abides upon you and it abides upon this place, the sound of this place will go out. The altar of this place will go out. The sound of this church is unique in Lethbridge. I know because I know in my church there's a sound that God's given us that's unique. And he said, you amplify that sound. That sound will bless other churches that don't even know they're being blessed by it. There's an anointing of mastership that abides in this place that will bring strength and blessing. And I say to you today, by the Spirit of the Lord, that the restoration of the mothering and fathering anointing combined with the apostleship will bring many sons and daughters to glory. And it'll bring many sons and daughters back. And it'll bring many sons and daughters into their destiny and into their calling. I'm Rob Parker and Fran. And uh, we're with the National House of Prayer in Ottawa. And uh, we had the vision for the National House of Prayer, and um, we looked at a building. Uh, they originally wanted $1.8 million, and through prayer, God showed us we'd get it for 900000 but it didn't matter if you had no money, what's the difference? <laughs> and um, we, <clears throat> Dick and Joan, had, had uh, learned of our, our journey and uh, had also believed in what we were carrying. To, because the purpose was to pray for government and to pray for the issues that come out of government that affect our nation. And um, that the government, the members of parliament would know that the church is serious about our, our uh, exhortation in scripture to first of all, pray for those in authority over us. And so <clears throat> uh, we came and, and um, we had a radio, or sorry, TV interview and, and shared the vision and then um, it was going to be aired sometime. Well, when that was aired, I think it was in September, um, first of all, we had made a, we had to come up with $500,000 in three months. I don't know if you've ever had to do that, but, <laughs> <coughs> and, and we had no money, right? And so, and, and uh, Dick and Joan had uh, aired our, what we were doing, and then it, it, it uh, uh, Fran, basically, the day that it, it became aired, she, she didn't get out of her pajamas all day because she was answering the phone where people were giving from across the nation. Where, <clears throat> there, were, there were couples, one couple was saying that we're going to eat porridge for the next month, we're giving you all our grocery money. Another, another child bro breaking the piggy bank and sending that from the grassroots level. And this could only have happened through the ministry of that time, through Dick and Joan. 
And uh, we raised, God raised through this ministry uh, and these individuals uh, $300,000. And then God provided the other 200000 miraculously as well. So, so I, I, the reason I feel this is so important to come and say this is that I believe that there's other ministries as well that you have supported and that have been birthed um, in, their, in their, your ministry. And, and I believe now, I want, to, I want to pray that that would be something that would continue in this place. That there would be a birthing of other ministries. That there wouldn't be a soul holding so tightly, this is mine. But there would be an open hands, this is your church, Lord. And I'm thinking bigger than the building. This is your church. And so the scripture... Um, you know, here you are in a brand new building, and this is hardly the one, but enlarge the place of your tent. <clears throat> enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide, and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. And so I believe that God is saying, in that spiritual way, enlarge, enlarge the place of your dwelling. And now that applies to all of you because it's, this is a dedication of a church, a dedication of a building, but it includes all of you, not just Dick and Joan, but all of you together with that same spirit that does not come into a competitive place, but comes into a place of blessing the body of Christ, blessing the place where God has planted you, and, and, and seeing God establish and birth ministries that will come from this place that God will use to, to affect this nation for his kingdom. So tonight, we're not dedicating a Dick and Joan Center. We're dedicating a platform to the nation that God has enabled us to build, and he's helped us. And we're dedicating a media center where the word of the Lord for the nation, and now we know the nations, will be released. And it'll be a word of hope, and it'll be a word of love. At the, our last prayer meeting before this conference, we were singing, and um, we were singing that song, what is it called? I see heaven. <laughs> and, you know, there's one little phrase in that song that just leapt in my soul. And it's this, I see hope restored. And when I heard that phrase, something leapt in my spirit. I could have gone right through the ceiling because I just knew this is what God, this, and, and the Lord said to me, yes, I've said to Dick, here's the keys. And the keys were for a building. But the building is not the thing. The building is the platform for what God wants to do in the future. And he said to me, I said to your husband, here's the keys. But he said to me, here is the key for this conference. And it's called Hope Restored for this nation. And he said to me, many will be watching by live stream across the nation. And they know our story. And I saw people weeping, literally weeping in their, in their living rooms or in their kitchens, wherever they were watching. And I saw people, and I, the first ones I saw were Inuit. And that really blessed you, didn't it, Stephen? I saw the Inuit because when we were at the Miracle Channel, we had such a company of northern, the, the northern peoples that partnered with us. And they felt like because they were in such a remote area that they were so far removed, how could we ever partner, be a, a part of a company that would change the nation? But they partnered with us and they became part of the media company and army that could join together, especially during partner weeks. And we released the word of the Lord over the nation of Canada and we saw things change. And it wasn't Dick and Joan. It was a company of people across this nation, not just those of us on these front rows, but it was a company of people like you and me, ordinary people 
who knew that they could join together and make a difference in this nation. That's what we're dedicating here tonight. I saw them weeping, and I saw people say in their hearts, if God can restore this, if God can raise up this mess, then he can restore me. And I heard them say, if God can restore this, then he can restore my family. And he can restore our nation. He can do something powerful in our nation. And I wept and wept and we cried and then I began to prophesy over this nation. And I knew that that was the key for this conference. Hope for the nation. And then afterwards we were just kind of chuckling because I said, you know, when we first began to, uh, you know, work on this conference in January, we wanted a new logo for Dominion Conference and we thought we need a little tag. And I just felt you know what? We should just tag this Dominion Conference, Hope for the Nation. And so here it is. This came in January. God gave it to us. I don't think we had any idea of the significance of this tag, Hope for the Nation, when we did this in January. We didn't, but God knew. God knew that this was the beginning of a new season. And God knew that hope is coming to this nation. God knew that people in the north, people in the Maritimes, people in the south, people on the prairies, people in Vancouver, everywhere across this nation, they're going to hear a word of hope and they're going to hear a word of love coming out of this place. And they're going to hear a word of restoration. That's what we're dedicating in this place tonight. It's a platform that's been restored. And all of our friends from across the nation that have walked with us and helped us are going to be here. And we're going to mine out the word of the Lord for the nation over and over and over again. And God gave me another word for all of you that came when I wrote the letter, the welcome letter in your registration packages. He said, Esther 414. And I wrote it from the classic amplified version because I really felt it was just so suited this occasion it says but who knows Esther that you might have come to the kingdom for such a time as this and then it says and maybe even for this specific occasion now I know that God's going to bless the ones that were here many had to cancel because we had to change the dates but those of you who are here and those of you that are watching by live stream mark my words today is a new day we've entered a new season and god is going to give us our marching orders but this is a season and i'm going to prophesy it restoration starts now amen david cries out to god in psalm 71 20 he says, you have allowed me, God, to suffer much hardship, but you will restore me to life again. You will lift me up from the depths of the earth. Have you been suffering much hardship lately? Maybe in your personal lives, in your work situation, in your family? You know, we don't always understand why these things happen to us, but one thing we do know if we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, he will lift us up. He will restore us to life again. We'd love to pray with you here in the Lifeline Prayer Center. Please give us a call at 403-942-0123, or you can email prayercenter at dickandjoan.com. This today already is a miracle. But after we were in the building for only just a few weeks, we were approached again by the ownership group and asked to purchase our portion of the building. But here's what is so surprising. We thought we would take two to three years to do this. They would like us to do this er as early as possible. So here's the challenge for us today. We want to be able to 
pay off all the renovations. We still have some to pay off. And then we'd like to raise a little bit of money so that we have a strong cash position when we move into the purchase. And that's why I'm sharing this with you today. I wish I could show you more. We're going to show you some more clips and video pictures that we'll insert into this. But I just want you to see just how amazing this facility is, the miracle that God is doing. We really can't miss this opportunity to purchase this facility. And so this can be a long-term broadcast center, ministry center, conference center, prayer center, and worship hall for all of our nation and beyond. Well, you know, we really feel blessed about that facility. It is a miracle, and as I said in that clip, it's a miracle from the beginning to the end. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know, it's like the old saying, you know, if you see a turtle on a fence post, right, how did he get there? Well, he didn't get there by himself, and no. that's how... Uh, we can certainly say this process is gone. But the bigger picture, Joan, and you said it just before, it's about the spiritual uh, mantle that we're carrying yeah. and I believe the ministry is carrying for restoration. And, you know, if you just even mention that word uh, uh, to <laughs> any group of believers, I think you almost get a 100% response where people say, yeah, there's stuff that I've experienced I need my health restored or uh -huh. a relationship restored or a child restored and you know Dick so many people have just lost hope yeah because it's been so long that they've yeah. been believing and waiting for their miracle mm -hmm. and the Bible says that hope deferred makes the heart sick but there comes a time when God said enough is enough and we felt in that conference that we moved through a door into a new season and we actually took some time in one of the services to turn our backs on the old season and wave goodbye yeah. at it and then turn around it was a prophetic act sure but just to turn around and to lift our hands up to the lord and say lord we welcome the new season yes. and i really believe that mm. a key for this new season is restoration for the body of christ so mm -hmm. many even leaders have lost hope and they've yeah. just you know laid aside the calling of God on their life but you know, God is saying it's time for restoration you know and uh, this would apply to every individual that's watching this program as mm -hmm. well that uh, God is in the business of restoration this is one of the most encouraging things of the scripture <laughs> and one of the things we want to mention is when there's restoration to take place it looks hopeless in the natural yeah I, I was just thinking after that conference which was the beginning of September <laughs> Uh, it seemed like circumstantially <laughs> everything went, but there, well, we call it like all hell broke loose, right? And there were some things, you know, there's, I, know. I mean, circumstantial building things and, and financial things that just seemed to take place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that does happen. And one of the reasons we've got to remember it happens is because there is spiritual opposition That's to the right. message of restoration. And uh, one of the most profound works in the Bible if, uh, are the prophets of Haggai, for example, and Zechariah, yeah. and Ezra, and Nehemiah, as they talk about the restoration of the temple after total, complete devastation. And over and over again, you read in those various books how it looks so hopeless. The, mm -hmm. I mean, the devastation wasn't just a little bit. It was a complete annihilation mm -hmm. of whatever God had built prior for hundreds of years, and now it was time to restore. And the people, it says in those books, and Haggai in particular, says they had lost hope. Mm -hmm. And some of them were comparing the present work to what had God had done <laughs> in Solomon's day, in Solomon's temple. And so they couldn't even grasp the depth of what God wanted to do in this new yeah. temple. And it's like that for us, is that very often when we've experienced some of the good things of God, then somehow the enemy has stolen them from us or circumstances have turned against us. And to come to a point where we can believe for God to really restore that can be very difficult, mm -hmm. especially when it's relational, like uh, marriages or children or yeah. other those kinds of things, but financial as well. And, and this is where we want to encourage you today. And I believe, Joan, mm -hmm. from uh, much of what we've been seeing over the past decade, really, is the anointing for restoration is upon you and me yeah. to encourage people. And we've had to fight hard to even move as far <laughs> forward as we've and had. It, it really has been a struggle, Dick. It's been a spiritual struggle. Yeah. Because um, 
I, I would have to say that all hell has been against us being Rising raised up. raised up again. Yeah. Uh, but I loved uh, some of the stuff that was said in our uh, dedication service. Fran and Rob Parker from the National House <laughs> of Prayer, bless their heart. He comes with a word from Isaiah 54, enlarge the place of your dwelling, yeah. you know, stretch out. And we're just like, oh my goodness, it took everything we had just to, you know, be in this building. And, and he comes with the word, enlarge the place of your tent dwellings. Yeah. And, and uh, but, you know, in, the, in, the, um, in one of the uh, versions of the Bible that I read, it said, so you can make room for more children. And one of the words was word. that there yeah. will be sons and, and daughters, daughters yeah. coming into this house and we will be mother and father to them and many more ministries will be birthed out of this place. Yeah. I love that because that is our heart. And Dick, really there's a whole generation of leaders that must emerge. So they right? should, we should let uh, everyone know we've started our internship program. Yes, we have. We've had one first. intern and we figure that's what we'll start with is one. <laughs> Her name is Madison, and we're very yeah. happy that she's part of that. But this is part of the process where we're going yeah. to be training young people. And, uh, you know, God is going to move in our nation mm -hmm. and move in the earth, really. Uh, scripture prophesies five times, and not only Old Testament but New, that the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as uh, the waters cover the sea, or the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. In some places it says, like the waters cover the sea, so God is going to flood the earth. Mm -hmm. And you know what, it is a generation, it's a new generation. 50 years ago, there was a new generation. Yes, sir. That was. changed and radically changed North America and the world. <laughs> but there's another generation here, 50 years later, that's going to rise up. Let's pray for you right now in these closing minutes, because you need restoration. And Lord, I just thank you. You know, I just, as soon as I said that, I saw a woman, you've lost movement in one of your arms or legs, one of your extremities, and I just see you crying out, oh God, I would love to have this movement back. Maybe mm -hmm. it was a stroke or maybe it was something else. But I just release a word over you that Thank God you, wants Jesus. to heal you. He wants to restore your mobility. I release it over you right now. But Father, we pray for restoration, the word that is on this program yes, to Lord. restore. And we know, Lord, many that need restoration. And what a difficult thing it is to go through loss and then hope and believe for restoration. We pray, Lord, right now for fresh hope. As Joan already mentioned multiple times in this program, that the word for this season <laughs> is hope, and that you will see Amen. hope restored in lives like you, just like you that are watching this program today. Yeah. That your son or your daughter will return. There That's will be right. restoration in your family. Mm. There will be restoration in many other areas. Uh, I just see somebody crying out because their church has gone through a very hard time, a church split or something, and they're crying out. They've been like an intercessor, and they're crying out for God to do something. I just want to speak a word of healing over that circumstance. I'd love to hear from you, by the way, and mm -hmm. call the prayer center, but I'd love to hear this. But I speak a word of restoration and healing in that church in Jesus' mighty name. Mm, I just have one quick word from Psalm 27. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That's the word of the Lord for you today. Lay hold of that, all yeah. right? <laughs> well, it's good to have you with us. And remember this, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.